Hi, this is Mr. Biotech with another SkinYourScreen.com tutorial, this one on creating radial symmetry in Photoshop. When we speak of symmetrical shapes, we usually speak of ones in which you can take a mirror and stick it across some axis of that shape, such as moving along this line, and in the mirror, if the mirror were down here, you reflect exactly the same shape as you have above. Now, a star is a great example of uh, that kind of symmetry, but it's also an example of what we would call radial symmetry. If you imagine a center point here, and each spike being the same shape that is repeated around that point, this time along uh, 45 degree angles to yield eight spikes radiating from the center point. This is an example of what we call radial symmetry, and it can be a little bit difficult to accomplish in Photoshop. Let me switch to an example to illustrate. So I've turned on Smart Guides here, which you can do from your view, and then Show, and then there's Smart Guides, which you're not going to be able to see in this particular film. but. Um, so in this case I have two different layers, one's a, a larger circle and then a smaller circle and with those smart guides I can align it at 90 degree angles relative to this shape. So if this were the center I can align this red circle to different corners or vertices of that provided they fall along 90 degree alignments. Now that's uh, that can be decent I guess but if, if we want to do something really weird like threefold symmetry uh, we've got a little bit of a difficulty if we start using very irregular shapes and want to rotate them around the center here that can also be um, difficult if we want to make each angle precise uh, here's an example of something that I made a long time ago that has some radial symmetry to it and you can see why this might be difficult so we have these very irregular sharp bladed wing like structures and these ones over here are basically the same as these guys except they've been rotated around 180 degrees from a center point here now in Photoshop if we want to do a transform on this uh, transform path and then we can rotate the object um, I can take the center point here and drag it to the center of this circle but we have no guarantee of knowing that it is like dead center. Now I can turn on the grid and we can blow it up and align it manually if we want but this can still be imprecise and sometimes you can end up with small artifacts so things won't look quite the way that you want them to uh, because things will be shifted by as small as one pixel but it can really distort a picture. So my first recommendation to you is to use Adobe Illustrator if you have it available because its alignment tools are vastly superior seeing how is, is how it's designed for illustration so if I take an ellipse tool and I'm gonna hold down the shift key as I drag out an ellipse and that will constrain it to just a circle if I don't hold down shift then I can do ellipses of all different sizes but I want a circle and I'm going to move it you can see that as I start to move it there are these little cyan lines that appear and these lines uh, indicate movement away from the origin of the shape where it used to be previously and you can see that it's snapping to a variety of different angles that I've preset here now you can set those by going to illustrators preferences and then the smart guides and grid and you can see here that I've set them for 60 degree angles Photoshop as I had just demonstrated only functions according to 90 degree angles so if we had a circle that was centered along this these uh, crosshairs it would only be able to follow smart guides that move along the vertical or horizontal axes but Illustrator will let us set all sorts of cool stuff we can do 30 degree angles or you can even set them arbitrarily I've done a 31 degree angle here we can do something wacky like 37 uh, I'm gonna stick to the 60 degree angles for this demonstration because we want some threefold symmetry so I'm gonna create another shape we'll make another perfect circle again by holding down the shift key as I drag that out and as I move this around relative to its origin you can see that it can align to the center of the larger circle or I can click it so that center point aligns on the circumference of it I find it easier in Illustrator if I lock it to the center of the shape first so this little circle is laying right on the center point for this larger one now if I click it and drag it away whoop, come on now there we go you see that blue vertical line where it's aligning and I can click it and it'll stick right to the edge of that other circle so I'm gonna copy and paste the shape again I'm gonna align it to the center and now as I move it away we can pick here's 150 degrees so we're gonna end up with a threefold symmetry and I can move it out along that smart guide it slides along until it clicks to that outer edge and then I release so I'm going to copy, paste, I can do exactly the same thing. 
So now we've just very easily created a threefold symmetry for this, uh, for this example in Illustrator. However, if we want to do this in Photoshop, because it snaps to 90 degrees, it gets a little tricky. If you have Illustrator, you can take this and you can export it to Photoshop. That's the best case scenario. However, you're not always going to be able to do that. So, in this example again, if I take this guy, and let's make it a little bigger just for interest here. Be easier to illustrate it. So we've got a larger shape. You can see that as I move it around, I can align it to that other red circle. You see the little purple lines here. I'm just going to stick it approximately in the center of the, the page and accept it. Now, if I want to create threefold symmetry, that means I'm going to have one of these circles up here, one of them approximately here, but those smart guides, eh, it's not quite working. Let me show you a little shortcut. So I'm going to align this to the edge, so I've got the center lines lined up. I'm going to copy the shape and paste it and move it so that it clicks here. Now if I click both of these, so make sure that on the layer off to the side uh, you can click the, the layer which is selected now or you can click these little vectors on it and you'll see how the little line appears around and make sure that that's selected and then using your path selection tool click this guy and then shift click this one so that will select both of them simultaneously and then I'm going to copy and paste and you can't tell that I pasted because they're lying right on top of it but now if I do a transform and I'm going to rotate I can set the angle up here that I want them to rotate and so I'm just gonna type in 60 degrees you can see that it moved them here appropriately so this circle is right where it should be uh, relative to this one these guys I don't really need right now but we'll get rid of them later so that's appropriate I'm going to accept it and very similarly I'm going to click and shift click here using the path selection tool edit copy edit paste and then when I do my transform this time I'm going to go the opposite direction so previously we went 60 degrees this time I'm going minus 60 degrees there we go so now I've got a six-fold symmetry which is something that we wouldn't easily be able to do in Photoshop previously uh, and in order to make it a three-fold symmetry I'm just gonna erase this one and erase this one and erase this one so now we have a threefold symmetry, something that is not inherently part of Photoshop nor its smart guides. So this is the beginning, of course. I'll give more complex uh, examples later on, but this is the basic idea of how you do radial symmetry in Photoshop. I'm Mr. Biotech, and this has been a SkinYourScreen.com tutorial.